Mm, what is up guys? Adam Kors, welcome back to the Vala Pokemon League Week 2 versus Hannah and her free macros. Um, yeah, going about it, just really gonna do a small team preview. I'm still in the workings of actually making better team previews. Um, as of this is absolutely not what I'm going for. Uh, though the idea is to have um, the sides here with the teams themselves and then the middle be the screen of the Pokemon I'm bringing and the sets it is. So uh, as, it, as it is right now <laughs> it's not ideal but we're still gonna go over it and the six in the middle are of course the Pokemon I'm bringing clearly. Uh, so my opponent's team here, Hannah has Tapu Golo, Halucha, which is one of those really really annoying combos to deal with, uh, Nidoqueen, Salamence, Scissor, Incineroar, Porygon 2, Jellicent, Bujana, Substrika, and Mega Dayenchi. Uh, so overall, this is a team that I would say is, while having some fast assets, it still is a primarily slow team. Her best defensive Pokemon are very slow, hence wall breaking is ideal here. So first and foremost, my first Pokemon to pick for this matchup was Mamoswine. We're gonna bring a Choice Bandit, Jolly Mamoswine, able to outspeed Timid Nidoqueen. Um, Choice Band, of course, ensures that um, most of the things there are two is KO, if not one is KO'd. Um, the only things that are speeding me are Pokemon that naturally knocks me out. Then I play Substrike, yeah, Dianchi, um, Haolucha, Inferi, and of course Salamence. However, not all of them can really come in versus Mamoswine. Of course, Ice Shot is a big thing here. Uh, as it can knock out Haolucha, we can knock out Salamence effortlessly. And they do have a big chunk on the energy. And the choice plan is also to make sure that Paragon 2 is not as effective as it possibly can be. Uh, Earthquake will do around, well, not 50% here. It's still with one of those damage outputs that is very high towards that. And of course, Mamoswine just negates Salamence functioning at all. Uh, second Pokemon I'm bringing here is. Um, Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is a Pokemon that does well versus this team, but it's not necessarily have an ideal set. Uh, the combination I would decide to bring was a timid variant able to outspeed uh, Natural Halucha, and the before, of course, potentially Grass Seed or Electric Seed kicks in. Uh, together with the likes of Thunderbolt, Hinopar Eyes, Calm Mind, and Roost. Um, the merit Koko has here is that it can set up against a lot of things, and it naturally doesn't is spreading out besides Needle Queen, there really aren't that many Pokemon that force it out uh, offensively. Porygon, Jellicent, Substrika, and um, to an extent that you'd say Porygon um, are Pokemon that I can set up and roost against with Calm Mind since they're usually especially offensive. So Tap Koku works here, and there are Pokemon you need to watch out for. Of course, Needle Queen can carry the likes of Yasha Berry, but also overall, an Assault Vest variant here makes sense, hence, it's not ideal. And of course, Incidore can be Assault Vest, and that's not gonna work for me either. Um, the third Pokemon is Soror, or Sorark, I was gonna say Sororak, but no Sorark. Um, Fight UMC variant this time around with Nasty Plot, Night Days, and Slush Bomb. Um, straightforward is supposed to be the Pokemon that are slower than it. Uh, there aren't really that many, but the thing is here, her defensive Pokemon don't deal that well with the uh, Sorark, and we're gonna disguise ourselves as Coco. Uh, because I find it's very very amusing. Uh, I was the dictator in a choice, a choice scarf set, but with Incineroar and whatnot, I really just want to beat the things that can check it. And Fight UMC just takes me a long way here, so it's going to be very usable. Uh, for Pokemon is the Haxorus, and it's an adamant variant. After one grind dance, we're able to outspeed the Mega the Energy, and I do believe we creep in and Timmy Needle Queen. Uh, no reason to go really faster than that. Adamant should be just about enough. And we have a Joshua Bear here because her best way of attacking me would be with ISP from Porygon, ISP from Jellicent, and of course ISP from Nidoqueen. Um, and they're potentially set up for it. The thing is here, I could in theory sweep this team once Porygon 2 is out of the way. Uh, Dragon Dance is just that good. Uh, the only thing that can take this Pokemon out would be Tapu Bolo, but since our combination here is Dragon Claw, Poison Jab, and Earthquake, it really has nothing to showcase here, hence it's gonna do really well, I'm sure. Fifth Pokemon, Steelix. It makes sense here. Stealth Frogs, Earthquake, and Heavy Slam together with Toxic. Uh, was dictated if I wanted to have uh, Roar or Fire Fang, but nah. Nah, it's alright. Uh, we need Toxic for Porygon 2 and Porygon 2 alone, but overall this Pokemon checks things that are very good versus me. Um, it checks how Lucha to an extent, it checks Salamence to an extent. 
uh, it's become a standstill versus Porygon and uh, it walls Substrike, which is a very strong re uh, response to Tapu Koko. So overall, Steelix makes sense because it's annoying to take out. And Tentacruel is your average Tentacruel. It's, um, let's see, it's timid, able to outspeed a timid Nidoqueen, but it's very much, it's a really bulky timid Tentacruel with Scald, a, um, Acid Spray, Rapid Spin, and uh, what's that? Toxic Spikes. Um, Toxic Spikes can be very good here anyway. Uh, definitely do some sort of good chip on a lot of her Pokemons, but also that you, you don't want to come in this Pokemon unless maybe the is being evolved. I don't necessarily have to worry about setting up Toxic Spikes. I, I, I felt fine here. Uh, her ideal team, I would say, would be the likes of Tapu Bulu, Halucha, Nidoqueen, Scizor, Porygon 2, and potentially, I should say, Jellicent, which would do us really well here. But really, with all that said, let's go to the team preview. So from the team preview here, I'm just gonna say it, there were a lot of Pokemons here I didn't expect and um, you know, I feel of course dumb for it, there were a lot of things here that I really wanted to see that didn't make it and uh, I have some Pokemons that doesn't make sense for this matchup due to it, for example Sorark is not necessarily that viable, Mamoswine while effective is not as good as I want it to be here and yeah just overall this is not a team I prep for that well, Nidoqueen while here and Halucha um, and Substrike uh, and Jellison, I guess, as extent, it still is one of those things like how Lucha coming here without Bulo. It means it's gonna be a Electric Seed variant, which means I really need to reserve myself how I use Coco. I don't want to be in a situation where um, <coughs> I get reverse sweep due to that. Emigrant the Energy overall, which was a Pokemon I didn't expect coming here, is also a tremendous threat in fury towards me. I really don't have a fair switching towards that. While I have a special defensive Steelix, it will not do that well versus that earth power will still be very tough so i need to keep sturdy in attack which means no rocks in the field which means the tap the crew has to rapid spin a lot um just overall this is not looking that very good really um i need to get dragon as with axers i think that's going to be one of my win cons and uh, already i've kind of felt that from the get-go and besides that just basically being reserved with coco means that we're going to have a passive game from my side where i'm basically going to look for an opening with axers uh, so with that said, yeah, we're gonna start off with Mammoth One. Actually, I would say it makes a lot of sense for this matchup since her best lead would be Nita Queen or Dianji. So with that said, let's go into the match. So from the get-go here, we will get a really strong lead as well as start off with the ex-wife, of course, the Mammoth Swine. My opponent here gonna lead off with Nita Queen, which well we do outspeed it unless it's it's Scarfed and Scarfed won't kill me, so Hannah definitely felt that this this is a threat for her. She needs to get out. She's gonna bring the Scissor and um, well, we're Choice Bandit, so clearly we are in an area where we can 2 it kill this Pokemon. It's not a fully defensive Scissor, which means it's dead by default. Um, now, here is where I do a bit of a misplay. Knowing that how Lucha was clearly the switch in here, I should not have stayed in and tried to go for the kill versus Scissor. I really shouldn't. Um, while it's still in the early game and I did work over the kill, I don't have a fair switch into a Salucha and of course it could get a potential free Sword Stance. So I need to switch out to bring in Calypso. Uh, luckily, Hannah goes for a high jump kick. She misses that, which is unfortunate. Um, not Though not really super decisive at least, but it is unfortunate. So Vision comes in, which is a strike. I'll take this chance to go for the Toxic Spike since I am in a really good amount of health. I felt really really frisky here trying to go for that and um, I don't know what zip strike I want to do I rarely face one I know it can be physical with bounce that's about it as I'll switch in Steelix Grimlock should be able to lock this Pokemon down and so we do uh, it could carry overheat I know that but um, that's about it we're special defensives we shouldn't need to worry as uh, I go actually directly for self rocks so that means we get our hazards on the field with a Pokemon that potentially has magic pounds and I, I felt really cocky doing the way I did here, though it is a very passive way of playing at this point at least. Uh, I still feel really good about myself that I actually got uh, stacking or and get multiple hasses on the field versus the team that could definitely uh, wall that out. Now I'll send in Calypso, I just wanted to really see what my opponent here decided to do. As um, she goes for a Willow, that's fine. Um, I don't do to my, well, special defense of being naturally really, really bulky. Uh, fear jealous into that aspect uh, as while I don't have the means of attacking it outside of acid pool, 
I can still kind of be in this area while the poison is shipping her down. But my opponent switches out, go directly for Mercury, the Nino Queen. And uh, well, unfortunately, she does get the Toxic Spikes out of the way, which you know it is to be expected with a stationary poison type. But of course, Acid Spray is not doing anything, shouldn't do for the base power. Come on, it's it's not a thing. Um, however, what this means is that. Uh, well, she'll get her rocks in the field now, and that's not going to be great. Uh, but I really don't want to stay in taking her power as I switch in the ex-wife. As I know, like I said already, I naturally do want to this Pokemon. But she'll switch out, go to Vision, the Sib Striker. And uh, yeah, you guys can see something really good. Sib Striker learns Low Kick. And it turns out Life or variants of Sib Striker can one-hit KO a Mammoth Wine. That's... I never seen anything like it, and I got of course on back foot here. And you know, my natural response to falling behind is, we should start sweeping something. So we're sending in Hexers here, as uh, she'll go for a Volt Switch is fine. Um, she actually sends in Jellicent here, and I was debating whether or not I want to go for a second Dragon Dance or not. But I should be in range. Uh, in theory, it is Willow down. Uh, Dragon Claw should be definitely an area where it should KO from here, at least so I think. And I think it would just be dumb to go for another Dragon Dance in case she goes a Will O Wisp. So, in essence of trying to avoid me getting burned, I'm going to attack this Pokemon directly. But as you guys see, the HP isn't that isn't that impressive. And I am an adamant variant. Though it is a max defense Jellison, it has a chance to survive, so. Yeah, let, let that sink in as she kind of, of course, recover with Will O Wisp and. Yeah, all of a sudden my opening got shut down, and um, while Haxorus is still a threat, it still is not as big of a threat as I wanted to. And um, here is where I'm still dictating whether or not this was the right pay play. I go right here for another Dragon Claw, and uh, I thought Mold Breaker negated Curse Body and stuff like that. It doesn't, of course it doesn't, why would it? Um, damn. As now I can't use Dragon Claw at all, and I, like I said, I was debating whether or not I should go for Dragon Dragon as reason B that there are a lot of Pokemon here that can take a few hits, and uh, Sister is one of them. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't go for a Bullet Punch here. I never got a response why she didn't do that, but we do get Sister out of the way, which is really great, um, most certainly. And um, her natural response now is actually bringing in Nino Queen. Which, due to me being burned, I can't KO from this range. The only merit I have against her is that I have a Yasha Bear, which should save me. But that's about it. Like, I'm waiting for Dragon Claw to get activated again. Because at this point, I really, really don't want to lock myself into Earthquake because of the Halucha. Uh, so we barely, of course, get that KO, which... Having that said, had I gone for another Dragon Claw, this could have been different. Because Yasha, while resisted or reduced here, still does a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, would much rather take a Skull or Shadow Ball actually thinking about it. Uh, though granted, you know, Shea Force is tough to take on. As um, I keep going for an Earthquake, I knew eventually something like this was going to happen. It is unfortunate, but it's super expected to happen. And, uh, you know, the poison keeps bringing me down. As eventually, I'm not locked to, um, or not Cursed Body anymore. So I actually went for Poison Jab here. Thinking about it, you probably go Dragon Claw. It wouldn't be a fair safe play here since her team is incredibly willed down. But all of a sudden, I will just say that to this. Haxorus, while doing the immense amount of damage towards this team, did not do what I wanted to do. I wanted that boy to sweep. And that did not happen. It was still in the kind of bad part where Haxorus is out, which was our main mean of attacking. And while she's her mini Pokemon are Halucha, Substrike, and Enchi, those three are actually quite effective here um, so I'm gonna bring in my Sora arc of course disguised as Coco kinda kinda weird seeing Coco come in without the lecture start. like it's a dead giveaway that of course this is a Serora it's it feels so dumb as um, uh, my opponent goes regular for a Volt Switch it'll do a really really good chunk of damage and uh, I'm gonna go directly for C Focus Blast like in my means Basically, I knock out anything that comes in. The only thing that can take it would be Dayenshi, because it has a Mega Vault. But even at that, um, it will still do a respectable chunk of damage. I'll, I'll say this though, um, Sora Arc wasn't, as I said, a Pokemon import of this game due to team matchup. It would have been doing a lot more or healthier if uh, I had the means here, but I don't. 
Um, it simply is wasted, but I'm really glad I at least get something out of it. Um, kind of felt that, you know, I should have had Sucker Punch here because um, the Ancient Survive on such a small amount of HP that uh, it would just make sense. It probably would have knocked it out from here because of the stab combination, but we don't get to find it out. You know, it's fine. Um, I put myself in this situation where I basically have to hope that Tabu Koku can uh, come out on top here. So then she goes for Diamond Storm, it's going to absolutely knock out Sorok. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Not, not, not even me. <laughs> As um, yeah, I'm like a few plays ahead or a play ahead here. But yeah, Coco is my only response now, and quite frankly, it's the only Pokemon that can serve this game or win this game. I really, from here on out, have no means of actually outplaying here or um, and what do you say? Stop Halucha. If it is with Poison Jab, it's going to do a lot of damage towards me. I know that. As uh, Vision comes in. Uh, my uh, response here was going for a call mine. Like my only idea here was that, in theory, I can call my roost and just get the electric surge out of the way, so I don't activate Lucha's uh, unburn ability and by default outspeed it. But you know, thinking about it, you know, it was of course a dumb play. Fortunately, though, the Volt Switch do um, re a reduce damage to call mine. It still does a lot, however, and Rock Out comes in. Of course, it's gonna pop that berry. But it is without soul stance, so it's not like I expect it to a poison jab to kill me and stuff like that, but it still is like till this point I'm I'm pretty darn nervous. But he, she goes for acrobatics, so I don't find out which was her last attack. Like I said, poison jab is something that would have done a lot of damage. It's clearly an Anivant uh Halucha, so yeah, that was a scary thing to see. Uh, we do of course, as you guys probably already noticed, win this game 3-0. Which was good, consider how our last game went versus Carl, which wasn't necessarily my strongest game here, and I choked quite well. So I'm really glad we got a win out of this versus an opponent that I generally struggle with. Hannah is a tough opponent, and we win here because we're kind of lucky in a sense here. So yeah, first and foremost, of course, I want to say um, well played to Hannah. I think it was a tough game for her. Uh, not having type of Bulu kind of made my team that more effective. Uh, since it was a really good overall response and it kind of nerfed the earthquakes from uh, Mammoth Swine, this was something I was really worried about. Uh, so, so not being in that situation and having Mammoth really spam earthquake was really good. I for, did though not ex expect that Substrike had to do what it did and it was marvelous. I definitely was super impressed by that. As it threw me off, I went to Haxorus and, and Haxorus of course failed, I guess you'd say, sweeping and really Needed a lot more damage output versus the Ellison, and that's my fault. Um, though it wasn't pretty, absolutely wasn't pretty. Uh, and the curse bar did not make that easier. Uh, so, to Hannah, I really just want to say thank you for the game. Definitely enjoyed it. Um, hope you guys who watched enjoyed this too, and I hope you enjoyed my new kind of layout. I'm still working on it, and it's still have some finesses that I might want to tweak and whatnot. But this is this is what it goes for now. So. Uh, for that said, as always, thank you for watching and take care, and I'll see you next week for the next battle. Till then, take care.